What's up, guys? I'm really excited for this episode because we're going to be talking about Action Cable. Now, Action Cable is a Rails 5 um, piece of functionality that is going to ship pretty soon. It just got released, the alpha version, on GitHub the other day. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what is Action Cable? Now, Action Cable is a WebSocket um, framework for Rails and Ruby sort of specifically, but with Rails's sort of mentality behind it. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means that you're gonna be able to build applications in Rails with Action Cable that can communicate to and from the server in real time. And DHH just posted an example of how to use it. We're gonna dive into that today. So let's do it. So I've cloned the Action Cable examples directory to uh, my computer. I've installed Redis, made sure that's set up, and then I have uh, run the bin setup uh, command, which basically set ups, sets up all of the gems on your machine. So a difference with Action Cable is you're gonna need to run two servers on your machine from now on. Um, not including Redis or MySQL or Postgres or your database, um, but you'll need to run two separate servers. So you could run your Rails application on Unicorn or Passenger or Puma or whatever you're used to, but you'll want to run Action Cable on something like Puma that's multi-threaded. And that is because you're going to have all of these open connections between your server and the client. Now normally when Rails works um, and someone requests a page, Rails just says, cool, I'll do that for you. It does a little bit of work, sends the response back, and it's done. With WebSockets, it keeps an open connection. So if you have a 1,000 people asking for things, that means there's going to be a 1,000 open connections rather than something like Unicorn opening up like four threads and saying, cool, we're going to do like these four things. We'll give you guys that back. We'll do yours and like uh, going down the line. So with WebSockets, you need a lot more concurrency flexibility there, and that's why that is designed the way it is. So all we need to do to test out this example is run the bin cable server uh, in one terminal, and then we want to do the regular old bin rails server in the other one. Um, we're also running everything here on GitHub master branches for Rails and Active Record and all of those pieces like sprockets. Um, so everything you're going to be using here is the latest and greatest, which could uh, possibly break. Okay, so now that we've got the page loaded, we can open up two of these. So I'm going to open up just the incognito mode for this. We'll open up localhost 3000 here as well. and. This page, just sessions new, is just like logging in with um, any authentication system. Normally you would type in a username and password or whatever, but this is just going to, you're gonna click on one, you're going to uh, set the cookie in the browser just because it's a, an example and we don't need to have all that functionality. So on the left here, let's log in as Snoop Dogg and on the right, let's log in as Ice Cube. And Basically, we're now on examples, and you can click on um, messages with live comments. Clearly, this is designed so that in the future, you'll be able to have more examples once you've logged in. But the one we've got right now is messages with live comments. So if we go into one of these messages, um, you'll see there's a few comments in the past that I've tested out, and this is great. Um, and if we make a post, this basically just puts it on the page immediately. That's just happening with regular old um, JavaScript form submits. Nothing special about that. But once we have another user in here and they post something, you'll notice that there's an instantaneous update on both sides. This one added the comment through just the, the form JavaScript response, but this one added the comment to the page through Action Cable. So this means that we can add um, real-time comments into our Rails applications and they'll function without a hitch. And also when we go and navigate between messages, the uh, updates are not 
going to override each other. So if I comment here, you don't see an update over here, and the same with this, but navigating to messages too will be um, functional again. So there's a handful of things going on here. Let's dive into the Rails code and take a look at what's going on to make this all happen. So there's a couple things to take a look at in, um, in the Rails app that have changed with Action Cable. First is the bin cable file, which basically says, let's run Puma with the config rackup file for cable. And cable config rackup is just basically the same as the Rails one. We load Rails, we load Action Cable and run the server. Nothing special there. Um, but the real magic of all of this is the Redis connection. Um, so we're using Redis and the config redis cable.yaml. Um, we're using that to create the publish and subscribe functionality here. So if you're not familiar with this, I definitely recommend checking out Redis pub sub. Um, you basically create these channels. You can give them names and they're separated usually by like namespaces. So you have like messages, colon, ID number, colon comments and you would subscribe to a channel like that. And if you had another one, you would do messages, colon two, colon comments. Um, this really, all of this functionality is built on top of Redis's pub sub functionality. So you'll notice that bleed through into active a action cable a little bit as we go through here. So there's two things in our Rails app that have changed or been added. We have an app channels folder and this is really the server side stuff. So it's the connection to Redis. Um, and we have a channel, which is sort of you just always inherit from this uh, action cable channel. Um, it's the base, like active record base. And then you have your connection, which is going to say when the WebSocket loads, let's verify the cookie in there and make sure the, log the user is logged in because we want to only do this for logged in users. That's pretty straightforward. You just uh, find the user and do that as you normally would. So inside the comments channel file, we have two interesting methods here. Now, these are methods that can be called from the JavaScript through the WebSocket, and they will be executed server side. This is really nifty. When the page loads, we want to start following this thread, like the current message that we're looking at in the browser. So when we visit messages too, we actually want to say, hey, like my current user wants to subscribe to the messages to comment stream. And this follow method basically tells Redis that. So it says, hey, Redis, like let's stop listening to everything. And then let's make sure we listen to message thread one. We want to get all the comments for that. So that's what this does. Um, and then when you want to navigate away and you want to unfollow that, you can just turn it off and you say like, let's stop following these streams. And it just kills your subscription to that Redis pub sub channel. It's really, really simple. There's no real magic here um, with how that works. And then uh, the other interesting piece is, so you have this channel um, and the browser side is setting up all this, this stuff. So inside app assets JavaScripts, you have a folder called channels. Now, the first thing that it does is it creates this app cable uh, variable, and that's a new WebSocket connection. So you have the server side, and it connects to uh, Redis and talks back and forth. And then you have client side in the browser, and that talks to the WebSocket, which then talks to this uh, Redis channel, and then vice versa. So you really have three things. You have the client side browser, you have action cable, server side, and then you have Redis, and then actually you have four because you have your Rails app, which can send a message to Redis through Action Cable, then Action Cable will send it across the WebSocket to the client-side browser. So there's a lot going on here, um, but it's not as complicated as you might think. So comments.coffee is the file where most of the magic happens because most of the magic here is all in the browser. So this basically says, let's create a uh, subscription and we're going to go to the comments channel. Now that um, should look very familiar. Comments channel is exactly the same name as the comments channel, uh, app channel 
uh, in our Rails app. So it's the same thing as the server-side Ruby that we're trying to access. Now we have a collection, and this is basically saying like, hey, on the page, there's a set of comments. We're looking for that. Um, that's where we're going to display all the comments. And then we have an event when our WebSocket connection is connected and authenticated and everything. Then we need to follow the current message. So we need to sub tell the server we want to subscribe to that. And then we have to add a uh, change callback onto the page so that if we navigate away, we can unfollow that. So let's look at how that works. When we want to follow this current message comment thread, uh, we look for the ID on the page, and then we just tell the server in the comments channel, perform the follow action for this ID. And we can pull up that code because this basically says, um, let's hit the comments, let, let's hit the comments channel, call the follow method, and then pass in some data as a hash, which is the message ID. And that's it. So it's going to then inject that message ID from the JavaScript straight to the action cable server and start listening to that Redis channel. So this is all handled for you. All the communication and everything is taken care of, which is pretty nifty. So then um, once we have that follow, we're done. We set up this page change callback next which basically just says, hey, when the page changes, so if you're using TurboLinks, if you go back a page, we want to make sure that we stop following that, um, and we don't want to get more updates and, and have weird stuff where those comments are still getting added to the wrong pages. So when we navigate away, we need to make sure we unfollow that thread, and we call the same follow current message, but because the page HTML and IDs have changed, the URL has changed as well, um, we're not going to have the same message ID, so we're either going to follow a new one or we're going to unfollow all of them. So maybe we just go from messages and we hit back and we come here to slash messages and there is no ID. In that case, we're not following any threads, so we don't need to be having that subscription in Redis to that. That's really, really simple and there's not a whole lot else to that. So we have a received method that says when we get a new comment uh, that's been saved to the database and we send it out to all the WebSockets, all those clients, those browsers are going to receive it and then they're gonna make sure that they just append it to the page unless you're the current user. And the reason you're doing that unless current user is because they submit the form and the form has a JavaScript response that immediately puts the comment on the page um, so that it's like there's no delay between that, um, and that's it. We really just check to see if the current user matches and ignore that in that case. So client side, it's really simple. You set up the page, you subscribe to the channel, and then you uh, handle updates on the channel. That's all you're doing. Now let's talk about how we get those, um, those changes across Redis. So if we um, open this up again and we type into one of these, this is just a regular old Rails remote form. So when we post the comment, it's some JavaScript going to the server and that's saving it to the database and then sending us a JavaScript response back to inject it on the page. It's the normal remote form that you're used to, um, but with one added thing. If we open up the comment model, there's an after commit hook that creates a background job to broadcast this out to every single user that's subscribed to that Redis channel for that current message. So the comment relay job is the one that broadcasts everything out and it happens in the background, which is why action uh, or active job has been so important in Rails 5 um, and, and the Rails community is because we need sort of this standard way to, to process background jobs if we're going to start using WebSockets and Rails um, because you don't ever want to block those, um, those responses back to the server. So this is defined in the jobs folder and we have the comment relay job which just talks straight to action cable server 
and I broadcast a message to the channel that you're looking for, and you can send some stuff over. And notably here, comments controller renders this partial, and that means that we're sending HTML to Redis and Action Cable sending that across the WebSocket into the browser, and that makes the browser really just have to do no processing, and it can just straight up inject it onto the page and be done with it. There's something really awesome about that because the server should be, in theory, the fastest at generating HTML, should be faster than phones or you know any of the possible devices that are um, running JavaScript in the browser these days. Ideally, it's going to be faster for the server to generate the HTML rather than using a front-end framework. So you're kind of pushing that idea where you know servers are always going to be faster in theory, and uh, you can use that to send it and transfer HTML rather than sending JSON. You could totally use JSON or send something like that over, and then use like React to re-update the page on the front end. But you totally don't have to. You could just send HTML and handle it the way this example does. So that's cool. We can define the way the comment uh, HTML is, is rendered one place, server side, and we don't have to duplicate it on both server and front end, and that's pretty nifty. Another really interesting thing to point out before we're done here is that Action Cable Server Broadcast is really simple. Basically just says, hey, Redis, on this channel, send this message and take care of it. So that is really available to you pretty much anywhere you could want to use it. Um, it makes a lot of sense to use this in background jobs, but that means that you can send messages pretty much from anywhere that you would like across Redis PubSub into uh, um, WebSockets on the client side, so long as they're subscribed. So channels are awesome. You could use a channel for notifications in the navigation. So you could send out real-time notifications to all your users. You name it. There's a lot of possibilities for this. Um, and comments are, of course, just, you know, the ideal one because you're able to, uh, to do that so quickly and everybody seems to like to use comments or real-time messaging as their first example for anything real-time. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's Action Cable. It's not too bad. It's got a long ways to go. It's definitely still an alpha. It sounds like they're going to be making a lot of changes to how it works internally, but it works. And um, it's really not too hard once you wrap your head around. Basically, you have the browser talking to the WebSocket, which listens to Redis and then is the one communicating back and forth with uh, your Rails application. So that's it. That is the Whirlwind Tour of Action Cable. I hope you liked it. If you have uh, comments, questions, anything, definitely leave a comment below. Give it a like if you like this episode and you want to see more about Action Cable. Um, let me know what you'd like to see built with Action Cable. I plan on doing many more screencasts with it, kind of experimenting what we can do in Rails um, and add in some really easy real-time communication. So that is it. I will talk to you next episode. Peace.